Well, hello there, and welcome to Coolest Life. My name is Tony, thank you for joining us here. Oh, be sure to like and subscribe, beat the rush. We'll wait, go ahead. Oh good, you got that taken care of? Appreciate you. So we're here at the, uh, the Miles Through Time, oh, Miles Through Time, Miles Through Time Car Museum. We're here in Clarksville, uh, not Tennessee. We're in Clarksville, Georgia. Uh, a little smaller than one in Tennessee, I assure you. But uh, they've got a huge shop here. We're about ready to go inside and I'm gonna get you some video of this place as long as they let me. If you're seeing this, more than likely I did get us some video of it. Uh, I saw some pictures online and they collect this, got some pretty nice uh, vehicles in here. I'm gonna take you through this museum because you just entered the coolest life. Automotive Museum Edition. I really like this uh, setup here. They got the Miles Through Time logo on the side of this truck, but it's like it's got a radiator link. <laughs> I haven't seen that before. There's an old one there too beside it. There's an old Cadillac. That's really cool. All right, let's go and see, see what we can find. Well, the, uh, as you come in here, you come into these main doors here, which you can't see because it's all whited out because it's, it's nice outside. It's about 68 degrees, but beautiful outside. But they got a huge area where they, they sell booths. So each booth you can come sell your stuff. Most of, a lot of antique stuff and different things. And the music's here is kind of loud. But uh, so hopefully I won't get unmonetized for all this background music we got going on. But they got a lot of cool stuff. So we're about ready to go into this room, which is where the main uh, museum is. As you come in, obviously our first cars would be buggies, right? But it just depends on what you call a car. Uh, these are some original ones, as you can see, some, some have seen some damage. But as you come through this doorway here, you see some of the Model A's, Model T's, even the little ones that you would sometimes see Shriners or other people ride in parades. But really nice. I like the fact that you can just walk right up to these. A lot of, a lot of times you go to a place like this and it's got, uh, um, wow, check out that steering wheel. A lot of times you walk up to some of these and you can't, it's a 22 Ford Model T, you can't uh, get this close to them because they're all ripped off. But these you can. Kind of like that, that's nice. Model T Milestone, look at that thing. You can get right up on it in there, like you own the thing. They've also all to the side, they got things like the Main Street General Store, now, I will not be showing you everything in here, I assure you. I'm only gonna show you bits and pieces. Some things that interest me, some things that I think might interest you, but uh, uh, because I want you to come here. Uh, this is in Clarksville, uh, uh, Clarksville, Georgia. It's not far from Helen, Georgia, so it's way up in Hiawassee in that area, but you can see it. And uh, I'm still looking for some of my uh, uh, popular cars that I like in the 1930s. I love the 1930s, I like the, the 34s and the 36s. I'm sure we'll see some of those in here. Maybe they'll be for sale. So this will be one of your first Woodies. It's a 1934 uh, Ford. It's really good condition. It's got, it's got some scuffs and some different things like that. It's not exactly show quality, but I would say you can still show this one. I like the wood doors though, those are, those are cool. These are, not, these are not snap on the side. These, these doors are actually made of wood. And I'd like to open the door, but I'm not going to. And if you're seriously thinking about building a car and making it out of wood, you might want to consider this model. <laughs> this one, they've done, they've made everything they could possibly make out of wood, out of wood, um, right down to the engine. And here's a, uh, a little piece on what this is all about. You can uh, pause this video and Read that if you want to. Made it life size in 1993, it says. So, but again, all you think about these, you can walk right out. Look, they even made this squeezer out of wood, <laughs> which this thing should be a, a piece of rubber to make your horn go off, but your horn's made out of wood. So, they made everything out of wood that they could. I will say this uh, it's got a metal suspension, so you could actually push this and it'll roll. Obviously, it won't run because, well, your engine's made of wood, but they, they tried to make it as close to uh, specs, but trying to make it wood. Even the, uh, this, all these seats, this is all wood. 
the leather top is wood. That's a that's a neat little neat little thing there. You don't see that very often. Uh, here's your one of your first ones. So this is probably 1911, or even before that, it might be 18 and some change. Let's see what this is. 1902. That's before they had steering wheels. You know, they had that thing in the center. That's how you steered. The good thing about it is you could, well, not this one. We'll say you could steer from either side, but not this one. And you see this a lot. You know, I've noticed this. Uh, a lot of times when you see those cowboy shows, those old westerns, they do tend to show the driver on this side, just like they do in England. And the and the guy riding shotgun is sitting over there. I, I recall that from a western I watched just a couple days ago. But anytime you, you see a, a, any kind of car museum, you're going to find some American muscle. You know what that is, huh? GS by Buick, anybody? Anybody? If you said GS stands for Grand Sport, it's so a 1970, you would be correct. And they got some of his cousins over here. There's a 1972 Grand Sport. A lot of times you see Grand T, which stands for Grand, Grand Turin, Turismo or Grand Torino. Those are cool. And these are uh, iconic here, this uh, Studebaker. Um, be looking be looking up here I'll put the uh, Studebaker Museum that I went to um, up in uh, Elkhart Indiana it's got a whole lot of these it tells you all about the Studebakers so be looking for that one a lot of cars I notice here on the side they've got a whole lot of models that are really cool all different year models of cars and they basically got them in chronological order as far as the years they were would have been on the road Get into some more of the ones that I like. I'm actually in here looking for a couple specific cars, and I don't see one uh, in here that I'm really looking for, which I have not seen as of yet. And here you got some, some of the newer ones. Some are just just Corvettes, some of the older Corvettes. Really cool. But anyway, I've got a whole bunch of those. Anybody know what this is? Chevrolet? Nope. Ford? Nope. Chrysler? Nope. American made? <laughs> yes. Yes. Actually, American Motors, the AMX from 1970. Of course, American Motors is used to make the Jeeps, I believe. It. The Jeep was American Motors until Chrysler bought it. That's it there. And of course, they made the uh, American Motors, I believe, made the Gremlin and uh, several other cars. Not many though. Yes, hey, I'm on my 1962 uh, Ford Galaxy. These make great lowrider cars just because of the lines that you see here. They make great lowriders. Especially that front end, classic front end. Chevy Impala is another one. The earlier Chevy Impalas, they, these were kind of in the same kind of genre there from the 70s and the late 60s. And before they started calling these station wagons, they called them Suburbans. This is a 1961 Suburban. Got the US Air Force plate on the front of it. Look at the front of that thing though. That's just like crazy looking. Dense inward. Horrid looking tires. I think I put chrome on that if I was them. Uh, the rear view mirror is not here. Looks like they put that there. This sets up there like a periscope. The Suburban for families. Even got some old coolers in the back. With, of course, classic beer, the Ham's beer. Gotta love you some Ham's beer. I don't think I've ever had a Ham's beer. If you have, leave a comment down below and tell me, tell me where you were when you had your, when you drink your Ham's beer. Were you at home or were you at some particular place? Uh, a 2004 Mercedes, and this one here was actually run in the Cannonball Run. They said they went from New York to LA in 29 hours and 15 minutes. So that's that's pretty cool. A lot of different stuff. This here looks like it's a dragster. That's pretty cool. Love the paint job, the metallic it's got on it, plus the, the classic flames. It's a 75 Ford Pinto wagon. Uh, we had a Pinto growing up. Ours was a 76 Pinto. It didn't look like this though. <laughs> it was red. 
North Georgia paint and body. Yeah, that's pretty serious there. Does not play. This, of course, is a dragster car. So I'm sure it's hooked up with nitrous and everything else. You can tell because it's got the big, nasty, fat racing slicks on it. And comes with a parachute option. I wonder if this uh, fin here really helps or if it's just for looks. They show it here, a picture of it here doing a wheelie. That's pretty neat. 76 Pintos. But if you didn't know, Pintos were known for exploding. It had to do with uh, where they put their gas tanks. It actually was not the wagons that were exploding. It was the, the little hatchback that they had. The, uh, the uh, tank was so far back behind the back wheels that when you got hit in the rear, it would had a tendency to explode. And now they kind of move them forward a little bit. This is called a 1935 Mathis ME4S. It says its original sticker price was uh, $1,500. I just saw that on there. Yeah, $1,500 was its original original sticker price. You can't touch that now. You probably can't buy the just the front end for that. <laughs> it's not a really good looking car. This looks very German, doesn't it? Uh, it's probably because of that back end, but from here, it looks pretty good. And there's a popular Corvette. It's the 72 Corvette Stingray Coupe. Uh, this is actually one of my favorites, and the reason is, I've always been a fan of this chap, this chopped uh, window in the back. I've, I was never a fan of the big bubble. I just, you got a little bit more room for them and probably more aerodynamic, but I've always liked the looks of that Stingray. That's a good looking one. That's the original, original wheels there too, which I've never been a fan of, but they are what you would expect to find on a Stingray. A lot of times the modifications of these, they would put the side pipes with the uh, grill so you can really see the side pipes. Uh, clean car this GT 500 good looking car good looking car let me see exactly what this says on it maybe you could take a look at it too if you wanted to read through it and see what this GT is special about it its sale price was four thousand one hundred dollars I'm sure everyone watching this would pay four thousand dollars for this car because you could sell it for a whole lot more than that probably upwards of I would say GT 500 this is probably it's at least a fifty thousand dollar car in really good condition it's even got the cobra uh, logo on the uh the wheel there they don't say i can't walk up there i guess i can well, this is a 1971 fiat soul boy is not very big at all approximately uh fifteen hundred dollars it would cost you to get this one here this took, i think mr bean drove one of these <laughs> little bitty thing he also had one of those that you uh flip out the front of it because it was a really small Three wheeler looking car. Uh, they got some uh, pedal cars up here too. It's really cool. I like the, uh, the little chopper there. They got his cousin there. Is that what I think it is? That's a 1968 Carmen Ghia. They look a lot like the, uh, they kind of favor the Opals a little bit, but that's the Volkswagen Carmen Ghia. And these are really popular cars too. You see these all over the place, these Porsches here. This is the 914 from 1973. Got like to, I had a buddy of mine that used to drive one of these Cadillac uh, Seville's. His family got one of those when they were brand new back in 1985. And so then, let's see, you're a graduate of high school. It was 85, so uh, that's really neat. And I got on one of those at one time, not recently, but uh, one of those great big wheel uh, bicycles. I always see those guys on American Pickers um, looking for these, trying to find the a Sinclair dynos and yeah, this one's in really good condition. You tell it to come and refurbish because this is that's plastic. I don't think they were plastic like that. They someone probably fabbed that one, but it's not bad looking. I don't think it was ever a working one, but it's got the different things to it. Um, that is a Cadillac. That is a Cadillac, the long stretch Cadillac, probably one of the longer two doors you'll ever see of any kind of car. Uh, is this one here. Especially them fins. Those fins are sick. They are tall fins. Bottom of this fin, look at that. That's like, that's like a foot <laughs> from down there. That's a serious fin. I like guess from Franklin. It's a 1959 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. Well, I hope you enjoyed this visit to this car museum here in Clarksville. Uh, uh, 
Georgia that uh, you can tell they really have got a, a nice variety of cars uh, that are in this lot, uh, spot. Some, some old ones, some new ones. Uh, most of them are a little older, say 20 years older or older, but uh, they've, got a, they've got a lot of a really nice memorabilia along the wall that you can see back here in different areas. It's like all around this museum. It's not a massively large museum. It's actually about the size of the Studebaker Museum. Studebaker may be a little bit larger. Be sure to check out that video, the one I mentioned before. Um, there's also a great museum in uh, Nashville. So if you get a chance to go to Nashville, go check out that museum up there. I got, I think it's called Lane uh, Auto Museum. But I'm gonna let you go. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe because uh, I'm just out here living the coolest life. Uh, automobile Car Museum Review Edition. Mm -hmm.